Hello and welcome to Comic Drake, where I talk about comic books, my name is Drake. After the destruction of the multiverse and DC's iconic event, Crisis on Infinite Earths, their ability to tell stories outside of their main continuity was severely injured. They weren't able to tell stories about worlds that were somewhere else. Enter Elseworlds, an imprint that was specifically designed to do, well, just that. As DC describes it in most of the books, in Elseworlds, heroes are taken from their usual settings and put into strange times and places, some that have existed or might have existed, and others that can't, couldn't, or shouldn't exist. Today on the show, I'm going to be talking about some of my all-time favorite Elseworlds stories, and some of these you probably have at least heard of in passing. However, to make things a little bit more structured, I'm only going to be talking about comics that have the Elseworlds branding on them. There are other books that take place in alternate continuity, some of them are really good, but in order to keep this on track, just Elseworlds books for this video. Let's start things off with a big one. Batman Gotham by Gaslight was a one-shot comic that asked an interesting question. What if Batman fought Jack the Ripper? Released in 1989 by writer Brian Augustin and artist Mike Mignola, Gotham by Gaslight was so popular that it led to the creation of the Elseworlds branding entirely and was retroactively labeled as such. The plot itself was rather straightforward. It's Batman, but in the 19th century. Yet when Bruce Wayne returned to Gotham City after some time training in Europe, it turns out that Jack the Ripper decided to come to America and continue his infamous killing spree in Gotham. As a result of this, Bruce was framed and arrested as the Ripper. Not Batman, Bruce Wayne. Locked away in Arkham Asylum, Bruce pours over the evidence to uncover the identity of the true killer in order to clear his name, and when he does, he sneaks out, dons the Batsuit, and manages to exonerate himself. Although Batman but in X setting has become a staple of Elseworlds books to an almost comical level, this is what started it all and left an impression for a good reason. I also love it when Batman books focus on the whole detective aspect of the character. I mean, after all, he is the world's greatest detective. Gotham by Gaslight also spawned a direct sequel called Batman Master of the Future, but for now, let's move on to a different but equally iconic story under the imprint. Despite Batman's utter dominance of the Elseworlds books, when a lot of people think about the imprint, they tend to think of 2004's Superman Red Sun, written by Mark Miller and illustrated by Dave Johnson and Killian Plunkett. Okay, so you know how the Earth rotates? Well, what if Superman's pod was a few hours later and he landed in the Soviet Union just before the Cold War? Well, that's the question that Red Sun wants to ask. This Superman was raised on socialist ideals and worked with Joseph Stalin to turn the Union into the world's leading superpower. Following Stalin's death, Superman was upset that the government didn't do enough and became president of the country, leading to a communist government that begins uniting the entire planet under one government. But along the way, Lex Luthor in the United States resists change, and separately Russia has their own Batman who acts as the premier force of anarchy. If you're already familiar with the world of Superman, then it's a lot of fun to catch all of the references and Russian versions of the usual supporting cast. But there's also a lot of callbacks to classic Superman art. This one, a bit more subtly referencing Action Comics number one, is among my favorites. The ending is a little bit odd in a very fun Because Comics way that I'd be remiss to spoil, but the series is only three issues long and can be a pretty quick read. At the very least, it is a must read when getting into the classic books of DC. But but speaking of classic books, let's talk about Kingdom Come. The first draft of Kingdom Come was outlined by legendary comic artist Alex Ross in 1994, but Mark Wade was later brought on to help with the writing, which led to it finally being released in 1996. This book is set a couple of decades into the future where the amount of metahumans is on the rise, but most of DC's classic icons have removed themselves from crime fighting and society as a whole. Superman is off farming in the Fortress of Solitude, Green Lantern has an emerald palace in space, and so much more. Although they're seldom dived into, the new costumes and takes on these older DC heroes are really interesting and have managed to become iconic in and of themselves. In the absence of the last generation, these new younger heroes have taken to straight up killing supervillains, most notably a new character named Magog, who serves as the face of the next generation for better or for worse. Unfortunately, a big fight got out of hand and the younger heroes ended up killing about a million civilians and the fallout caused a sizable portion of the United States farmland to become irradiated. 
end. This prompted many older heroes to return, causing an all-out fight between both generations and a third party made up of former villains and non-powered heroes led by Batman. This book is essential reading for DC fans, and despite being an Elseworlds title, its influence can be felt in the main continuities, including adaptations of Magog and the new mantle of Red Robin that was taken up by Dick Grayson, although these days it's now synonymous with the main continuity Tim Drake. Okay, so now that we've got the big three books out of the way, let's move on to some lesser-known Elseworlds stories that I personally enjoyed. We've seen Batman with a lantern power ring on several occasions. In fact, there were enough times that I have an entire video talking about them all, but this is where the concept originated. Batman in Darkest Night was written in 1994 by Mike Barr and illustrated by Jerry Bingham, and it starts off pretty par for the course, with this Bruce Wayne receiving a power ring from Abin Sur, becoming Green Lantern, and stopping crime in Gotham City. But he's quickly tasked with taking down Sinestro, who was using his power ring to rule over his planet, Kuragar. This book takes a turn, though, when Sinestro comes back with a yellow power ring and fuses minds with the man that killed Bruce's parents, Joe Chill. This drives Sinestro insane and adopting new mannerisms akin to the Joker. Bruce wants to stay and fight him, but the Guardians of the Universe wanted Wayne to go out and patrol space more. When Bruce refused, the Guardians sent the entire core after him and also deputized Superman, The Flash, and Wonder Woman as Green Lanterns for good measure. While Bruce fights off the entire Green Lantern Corps, the new Deputy Lanterns defeat Sinestro, and the book just kind of ends. You see, In Darkest Night is a one-shot, so it had a lot of ground to cover in only 46 pages, but for what it is, the book is pretty satisfying. To finish things off, I want to talk about something a little bit interesting in my opinion. In 1994, DC released special annual issues of their books, each acting as a one-shot Elseworlds branded story. So here's a couple that I enjoyed that you really don't see discussed a lot online. The Barry Allen story is a lot more mundane than a lot of other Elseworlds stories that tend to focus on massive alternate universes with radical changes. However, Mark Wheatley and Alan Gross managed to make something entertaining despite being scaled back. In this continuity, Wally West's identity was public after becoming Kid Flash, and he used that spotlight to launch a career as a child actor. In one encounter with Captain Cold, though, Wally was seriously injured, and Barry Allen died altogether, which sent his young protege's life in a downward spiral. Wally started losing his powers, which ended up causing his show to fall in popularity, he was eventually bound to a wheelchair, and he became an alcoholic. Ten years after Barry's death, Wally tried honoring his mentor and also made an attempt to capture some notoriety by writing and directing a TV movie about the Flash's life story. But his amateur skills almost led to him being fired. To compensate, the network brought in the recently reformed Captain Cold to supervise, and that's where a lot of the story's tension comes from. I've always been a firm believer that fight scenes are usually the least interesting things in superhero comics, and where they really shine is dialogue, internal struggles, and clashes of ideals. While there are definitely a lot of better written Elseworlds books out there, I feel like the Barry Allen story deserves at least a little bit of spotlight for doing something a bit different and still manage being entertaining in the process. Finally, let's talk about The Narrow Path, written by Chuck Dixon and illustrated by Enrique Villagran. So before the, uh, interesting Batman Ninja movie, this book focused on Tengu, the apprentice of the Bat Ninja in feudal Japan. It was the ninja's duty to protect the real-world leader Toyotomi Hideyori, but after being killed off by mysterious assassins, Tengu was tasked with being his replacement and had to journey to Osaka Castle to offer his fealty. It turns out, though, that Tengu is Toyotomi's thought-to-be-deceased brother, and it was him that sent the assassins, aiming to tie up the loose ends and cement his leadership by birthright. It goes without saying, saying he didn't expect that the Bat Ninja would be the one that was killed instead. When Toyotomi tried taking out Tengu himself, the young ninja killed his brother in self-defense, breaking the vow that he made to his mentor that he would never kill. Because of this, Tengu committed seppuku, and that's the end. But hey, there was a lot of interesting stuff in between. This was just highly compacted and very summarized. I recommend reading the book regardless, though. Well, that ended on a little bit of a downer. But hey, there are plenty of other Elseworlds branded books that I wasn't able to talk about in this video, so if there's any that you really like, then go ahead and discuss them down there in the comments below. Who knows, eventually I might make a follow-up to this in some way, shape, or form. But hey, if you like this video, then why not consider subscribing, or even watching another one? I mentioned it earlier in the episode, but I have a dedicated video on every single time that Batman has used a power ring, at least at the time that it was made. So if that's a fascinating concept to you, then go ahead and click that one. Anyway, I hope you learned at least a little something new, and hopefully I'll see you next time.